Rick, we talked after Saturday's win for the Cardinals over NC State about whether the surging Cardinals could be actually favored against Kentucky, despite the fact that they've lost the last uh, three in this series pretty uh, one-sided affairs. What are your thoughts now? Well, Kentucky's favored by three, which when you factor in the game is in Lexington, it's pretty much considered even. Um, yeah. You know, it's going to come down to motivation. Um, I think Louisville should be highly motivated just from the standpoint that it's been so long since they've beaten Kentucky. You wonder with Kentucky uh, how high the motivation is because, you know, they're going to be – they're six and five. They were hoping for at least eight and four, maybe even better when they were number seven in the country. Uh, and you've beaten your rival three straight times – uh, convincingly, when the coach tells you to take him seriously, you know, do you still get as fired up as you were? And the second thing will be whether Louisville can continue its formula of success over this run, which is play really good offense, but play even better defense. They forced 28 turnovers this season. They're averaging more than two a game. Can they turn Kentucky over? I thought we'd see Malik Cunningham last week. Uh, going into that NC State game, it sounded like if there was a chance he was going to play, he was going to play. Uh, he didn't play, and, and I'm not so sure we're going to see him this week. It, it's really kind of hard to know. Yeah, they were pretty vague about it. Said he was day to day and hoped that he would do some things in practice on Tuesday. Uh, offensive coordinator Lance Taylor talked about how well the game plan is really not that much different depending upon who plays. There's just more quarterback runs with Malik. But they would need, like to need to know by Thursday or the latest Friday if he can go. I agree with you. I, I think it's going to be Brock Doman myself. Yeah, I mean, they've had some success. He's, uh, he's had a couple starts, a couple of wins now. Uh, more of a game manager, uh, I guess. He's, he's not going to, uh, uh, at least they hope, turn it over much and, and just try to keep things in, in check and, and let the defense do their thing. Yeah. Uh, one good thing about Brock Doman is he's won a road game against Virginia, so he's, he's played on the road and has success. And secondly, in that game, he did show, and I'd forgotten that, he showed that he could run the ball a little yeah. bit too. He had that long touchdown run, which was key in that game. Um, you know, he, he's been fine in the two games they've had so far. You can a actually argue he might be a little bit more uh, dangerous passer. Uh, he, he's thrown some good balls in, in, in these games. Uh, I like the, It's not like you're just putting some guy in cold off the bench who's totally inexperienced. He's played meaningful uh, minutes in this season, and I think he'll do fine against Kentucky if he has to play. How much of a factor do previous results uh, have in a game like this? This has been a series where teams seem to get on a roll. Louisville's won three in a row. A couple of times they won five in a row in, in one stretch in this series. Kentucky has now dominated these, these last three affairs. Um, it's been strange. There hasn't been a lot of back and forth year to year. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's interesting. The first year of these three routes in a row, that was the year that Petrino got fired before the game and Louisville was just in a downward spot. They, they <laughs> yeah. wouldn't have beaten anybody that day. Uh, then the next year was Satterfield's first game in the rivalry. Kentucky was better, uh, had better personnel. And I think last year was the most surprising one. I, I think everybody expected a closer game last year. And, and the way that Will Levis just ran through them was puzzling. And then, you know, the fans started leaving the, the stadium. You remember how the season yeah. was at the end of the game. Yeah. It just went downhill quickly. Um, I don't think it'll be a blowout again. I think it'll be a close game. I hope that it is. It's better for the rivalry when the games are close. You have a prediction? Not yet. You have a feel? Or... You've seen my picks on against the spread. You, you don't want my prediction. Yeah, neither one of us has been very good with that. <laughs> I hope that just a close game. I, I want to see a game that's close in the fourth quarter. The last three haven't been that way. Uh, give us something to talk about. We, we go back. There have been some epic games in this rivalry since it be began back in 1994, and I think it's better for both schools when it's close. Yeah, and, and better when – both teams can uh, can get some wins, uh, so yeah, we'll see how it goes. It's three thirty start in Lexington. Uh, it's three o'clock. Three o'clock start in Lexington. And yeah. Trying to, and they're trying to not finish six and six. So I guess that's their motivation. Louisville, if you would have, when we were out here October third, I guess it was, saying yeah, your Louisville's going to finish eight and four. <laughs> we, did, we wouldn't have predicted that. And did not seem likely. Zero. Yeah. <laughs> give a hat tip to Scott Satterfield. He's turned this around. Uh, he was taking a lot of noise from outside world and from inside the fan base, and he didn't really respond to any of it, and he's just won, and he's handled it really well inside the team and outside the team, and, and that's really impressive to see.
Yeah, the one thing that would certainly cap off what has been a terrific second half of the season would be a win over your rival, especially after uh, the last few years. But we'll see uh, what happens. We'll keep talking about it. He's Rick. I'm Tom. Talk to you soon.